So friends, I welcome you to this online session called Agile Retrospectives. As part of this, we will learn nine different formats of how to perform Agile Retrospectives. And we will also discuss nine anti-patterns that can derail your Agile Retrospectives. Okay, so let us now uh, understand why this session is important. Most of the times on the ground, we see scenarios, right? Uh, where people come to the agile retrospectives with a standard format. For example, they come, what went well, what did not go well, and what can be improved. So with that format, people come to the retrospectives most of the times. So it has been in the people's mind that retrospectives means only the format of what went well, what did not go well, and what can be improved. Now, as part of this session, we'll first understand what are retrospectives and why these retrospectives are useful and beneficial. What is the process of performing these agile retrospectives? What are the different formats, nine different formats we will learn as part of this session of how to conduct retrospectives and we'll also discuss the nine anti-patterns. At the end of this session, we will be in a position to understand the genesis of the retrospective, number one. Number two is depending upon the mood and context and the situation of the team, which format we have to use to capture the retrospective objectives and be conscious of some of the anti-patterns so that you can prepare well, right? With this, let us get into our discussion. Let us first understand what are Agile Retrospectives. For us, all these print events, they are emanating from the Agile principles. One of the principles of Agile Manifesto is at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. This is the principle, right? At a specific intervals, what are those intervals? If you are conducting sprints, if you are in Scrum and if you are adopting sprints, then you call them as sprint retrospective. If you are in Kanban, you say iteration retrospective. But those intervals should be at regulars. If you are conducting retrospective at the end of two weeks, let's say sprint, two week sprint, then these are called sprint retrospective. If you are running a Kanban of two weeks iteration, it's called iteration retrospective. These iteration retrospective or sprint retrospective's purpose is to plan ways to increase quality and effectiveness. Friends, only two key words, quality and effectiveness. And this becomes possible when team reflects on processes, progress, tools, the definition of done of the deliverables, individuals, interactions. In a period of two weeks, we must have progressed. There's a working increment, the potentially shippable increment. We have to see whether we have reached the sprint goal or not. That means, the planned stories as part of sprint backlog, are we in a position to complete it as per the acceptance criteria and as per the product owner's uh, you know, thought process? Right. Now, that's where we say, are we in a position to meet the acceptance criteria as per the definition of that? That is on the progress part. The second part is in the period of two weeks, the team must have conversed right? Certain conversations will be in a team bonding way. Certain conversations will be, right? Uh, they will be in the, in the hot way. Certain conversations will be in an angry mode. Okay. Those are signals for us. We have to capture those things. 
you have to understand how the interactions within the team and how our interactions with other team how they are happening what are the tools that we have used and how people have behaved during the process of iteration or sprint so all those individuals interactions processes tools the definition of them and the progress on all the parameters we have to introspect we have to inspect we have to reflect generally in the process what happens is we make certain assumptions right so those assumptions must have led to astray that is deviation so what we have planned versus what we have achieved there must be some deviation when you look at individuals interactions processes progress tools and their definition of that the moment you identify the deviation then it is a time for us to reflect what was planned and what is actually we have achieved so then the retrospective is an event wherein people discusses those deviations those attributes in a free environment with respect to what are the problems we encountered and what part of those problems we are able to solve and what part of the problems we are not able to solve right there are problems which we are able to solve in the sprint there are problems which we are not able to solve in the sprint how we are able to manage this and the with most helpful changes okay so these are the problems this is why the deviation has you know have cropped up and if we act on these changes these actions that will improve my quality my effectiveness and then we start including them into okay these priority action items or you know i wanted to prioritize in upcoming two weeks or four weeks and then we have an action item owner and we track them and we will ensure the team gets a feeling that right team gets a feeling that you know whatever we are contributing the, as a team we are serious about it and we are acting on it right this is the whole purpose this is the whole purpose of retrospective this is the whole genesis of retrospective so what are retrospectives retrospectives number one has the team has to meet and talk in a safe environment in a comfortable environment number one number two is we have to discuss on the progress the definition of done whether we are able to meet or not the people the tools the processes the conversations within the team the conversations outside the team the whole gamut comes into picture and then we basically identify what are the deviations what we are able to solve what we are not able to solve what has led us to you know reflect in the uh, you know deviation for example we are able to slip on certain targets what are those things and then we'll figure it out and come up with an action plan of how to adopt like because we wanted to adopt we wanted to reflect we wanted to adopt right this is what it is the whole genesis and then you prioritize action items not every action item you identify in the a uh, retrospective you can act upon because at the end of the day you only have a limited resources right so when you have limited resources limited time limited budget you can only act on limited action items so as part of retrospective if team identifies 10 action items you can probably act on two or three depending upon the resources the time the constraints you have so you prioritize those three action items and then you tell to the team members that guys these are the three priority action items we have taken up so who are the parties to this part of the retrospective the team the scrum master the product owner is optional and the team can invite other stakeholders but especially at the will of the team but if people are not free to speak in the presence of those people then we should not part invite those people because we want a safe and free environment that's why as much as possible we do not recommend the managers to be part of retrospectives because 
it may prevent people to talk their opinions freely. So only the stakeholders invited by the team that can ensure that they can freely speak, those people are okay, but definitely the people with power, okay, in, in whose presence team cannot speak very freely, we should not invite them. Because if they come there, the people come will speak only what is uh, uh, you know, convenient or what is agreeable to the power people. So that's the reason we're saying team scrum master are the safest bets to, part, to take part in the retrospectives. Product owner is optional. And you can invite others only when you can assure that team can speak freely. What's the duration? It is 45 minutes per one week of sprint. If, if your sprint cycle is two weeks, it is one and a half hour, not more than that, right? So if you're running two week sprint, it is one and a half hour. If you're running one week sprint, it is 45 minutes. If you're running for four week sprints, it's three hours, not more than that, right? It's time box to that. Okay, let us and my friends, what are the uh, retrospective processes? Generally, I see a situation, friends, wherein people go to retrospectives without any preparation, especially the scrum masters, okay? And you will not get any agreed outcome, any uh, proper outcome out of this event. There's a preparation behind it. Let us understand the five steps of retrospective process. What are those processes? The step number one is setting the stage. The step number two is gather the data. Step number three is generate insights. Step number four is decide what to do. And step number five is close the retrospective. Let us understand these steps in detail. The step number one, that is setting the stage. The moment Scrum Masters you know, starts the retrospective, he has to ease the environment around. He has to create a comfortable environment, right? So basically some of the practices is you can welcome people, you can appreciate their time uh, investment because you can say, guys, you know, I know you're very busy with the, uh, you know, fixing what has been uncovered as part of the sprint demo or some production issues, right? But still you are giving importance for the improvement of the team. And that's the reason you are spending your time we really thank your time like that. You have to set it, you have to set the stage like that. Some of the other practices the team, team member follows is the Scrum Masters provide some cheats, uh, you know, cheat, uh, sticky notes and say, guys, you write down what is happening in your mind. So people write down and then say, crash it and throw it. So it is an exercise wherein you are making people to forget what they're going through. Okay, this is the retrospective time and I want to enjoy this and I want to practice it. So I want to give my full attention to that. So by writing down what is in my mind or at least a happy face, a anger face or uh, uh, some, some you know, neutral face, like this a face, a picture they give and they just crush the paper, throw it out. The whole purpose is you, we as a team member, we as a team need to forget what is happening and look forward for, you know, for the retrospective meeting. So you have to set the stage. Then you have to say, you know, you need to say, guys, this is going to be a one and a half hour meeting. The goal of this particular meeting is predominantly to discuss on why the quality is being impacted, why more number of stories are getting spillover to the next sprint. And we are going to follow this kind of a format, right? So you have to establish the duration, you have to establish the goal, you have to establish the approach. And you can ask people, are you okay with this? Do you want to add more goals into it? Or you want to de and delete some of the goals there? And then you have to establish the stage when the environment is free, people can freely speak about their difficult topics and they can question each other. So that kind of environment we have to create. And that environment you can create in retrospectives when you do homework as well. As a scrum master, you have to do a, a, a offline one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching as well. The fruits of that is what will be visible here. 
right? The first one is you have to make sure people are free and you have a goal in place. You will say how much time it is going to take and you will establish the stage. The second one is you have to gather the data. See friends, most of the times what happens is people come to retrospective just without any preparation. So the Scrum Master can actually bring difference in terms of bringing the numbers, right? So basically how many stories got completed, how many additional tasks were performed than planned, how the, the, the inference of burn down charts, burn up charts, what's the velocity compared to last three sprints and what's the velocity that we completed just in the, in the concluded sprint. Because this sprint retrospective happens on the final day of the sprint. So in this sprint, we are able to achieve less velocity or more velocity. And what's the defect counts, stories completed, the code refactored, the effort data. So numbers we have to bring. Why? Because it ensures the team speaks, keeping a shared picture about what is happening. Generally, what happens is people come to the retrospective and they talk whatever is there in mind. And then just perception, they talk and they go away. And then if you tomorrow say my retrospectives are not uh, proper, people are not giving proper information, then I can't help. We have to do a preparation. And that's come master especially, or the responsible people within the team, they need to bring up the data also so that their perspective is properly understood by the team members. Number one. Number two, benefit without, see the benefit is without the common understanding of the data, there's a possibility that individuals tend to verify their opinions and beliefs. So they just talk whatever is there in their mind, their opinions, their beliefs. But the moment the data is there, then it brings a shared picture of what is happening. After this stage, right, we are actually getting into conversation styles. So it is called generating the insights during the process of conversations, right? So we have to ask the moment people say, this is good, this is not good. Then we as a scrum masters should ask them, why, why? We have to make them think about how can it be done differently? If somebody says, hey, that person did not cooperate. I think this person really want to do, uh, you know, he doesn't want to help us. I think this person, uh, you know, intentionally did this particular thing. Then the question is, don't jump to solutions. Uh, so somebody says a problem, somebody getting a solution, don't jump. Ask a question. Why do you think that person has done like that? What do you think as his motive? How do you think it could have been alternately handled? If you are in that person's position, how do you behave differently? So ask why. My friends, I want to tell you, even the greatest people, okay, they are gaining the height in their position, in their personal life, because they think clearly. They accept the mistakes as is. They ask the question, why, why, and why? And the question is, as part of generating insights, the art of facilitation matters. You have to make sure that the team steps back and see the bigger picture. Probably during the sprint, they are on the ground. So they come to solutions, or they come to conclusions. As part of retrospective, you have to step back and you have to think what's the bigger picture. Why that person has behaved like this? Why that person has talked like that? Ask why, how this thing could have been handled differently. The moment you ask this question, then team members starts backing themselves and they start answering. You have to make them think the bigger picture through proper questioning. Why, why, and why? And these things will generate insights. And this is the crux of any retrospective. The moment you identify the, the insights, then you have to come up with, you know, what are the priority action items? Because as part of the insights, you have basically come up with thoughts, reasons, causes, and probable actions. As part of decide what to do, you have to say, okay, guys, out of 12 action items we agreed upon, given our time constrained resources, we have, you know, we can attack three observations or three priority action items. 
And then we need to create an action plan for them. And then we need to set for each action plan, how do you measure a goals? How do you set a goals? Because it is not something that, you know, you took up an action item, you act on it. But at the end of the day, each action item need to be close in its spirit. So how do you set smart goals, right? Uh, in, in terms so that you can verify those goals. So decide what to do. And finally, my friends, right? However best we are, is always improvement to improve the retrospective process. So you have to ask, uh, you know, this is what is the action items we have taken as part of the retrospectives. Out of 12, these are three action items we have taken. And can you tell us now, do you think we have handled the retrospective properly? Some of the uh, inputs like, you know, uh, you know, the conversations went for a long time. The scrum master could have intervened in between, or some people couldn't have uh, talked for a long time. Certain things could be could have been taken uh, off the line. So such kind of observations will come on the retrospective process itself. It's like feedback on the retrospective process. It's like retrospective for the retrospective event. And at the end of the day, guys, we have taken the feedback on this process. And in the past, in the past retrospective, you told about three action items or two action items on improving the process. We acted upon it. And now also we are taking up your inputs and we are acting on it. And we take it, we take, we, we consider feedback as gift and we consider this and we act on top of this. So friends, this is what is the genesis you have to do within the retrospective. Number one, set the stage. Number two, gather the data. Number three, generate insights in asking why and making the team to step back and thinking the big picture and making the team think about how could this issue be handled differently. If you are in that particular person's position, how do you handle that, right? And then decide what to do, right? And then close retrospectives, right? So this is what this decide what to do is what the process where you prioritize action items and close retrospective is where you thank their time, you summarize the action items, you are taking it up, and you also take feedback on the whole retrospective process itself. So friends, now that we understand how retrospective process works, now let us understand different formats, okay? We are going to discuss nine different retrospective formats. The number one is, you know, what we all do. What went well? what can be improved and what did not go well, right? So the Scrum Master writes down these three columns. He provides the sticky notes and people say green, they, they write what went well. Uh, amber, what can be improved? Red color sticky notes, what did not go well? They write and put it. If you see the swim lanes, horizontal lines, so you can come up with the themes. People, one, one line. And uh, progress are uh, one line or, uh, a, you know, process one line, tools one line. So depending upon the context, you can divide into lines. Like, you know, on the line one, you talk about what went well themes with respect to process, progress, like sprint goal. Line two, you can talk about the um, actions or inputs relating to tools. Line three is people. And line four is tools or, um, in, or uh, uh, conversations or external impediments. So you, depending upon the context, you come up with the horizontal lines and you basically, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, convene like this. This is a usual way of what went well, what can be improved, what did not go well. So this, the only difference I'm making is different horizontal lines for different themes and different color nodes for different themes, right? So this is what you can actually do, number one. Number two is the hot air balloon method, okay? So this hot air balloon method is a simple activity. For example, you see a situation wherein the team is being pulled down and the team is not able to lift, right? There are certain situations wherein the team is trying their best, but progress is not coming. The team is care up to do their best. They want to win. They want to make sure that, you know, they, they solve these problems for sure. They're trying their best, but somehow they're not, they're not able to achieve that. In that mode, in that context, you draw this hot air balloon. So whatever or you know, uh, whatever or the balloon that makes you high, 
fire the fire and hot air for example at the bottom firing the more fire happens here so you are pulling so there are pulling down uh, and forces are there they are pulling up forces are there so the pulling up forces are, are more that means you can gain height height the pulling down forces are more then you basically come down so to reflect that particular situation see the point is the coming up with this kind of pictureization is all about telling the team guys we are in a context wherein we wanted to increase the height but we have been pulled down so what are the forces that are keeping us because of these which forces we are going up because of which forces we are being down like right so a clear segmentation of what is pulling you up what is pulling you down the moment you put a picture there and ask the team to put their inputs there and then they put up there and it gives a clarity see this particular method is giving a symbolizing the situation the team is in the team is in a situation wherein something is pulling down and something is pulling up so up forces should be more than the down forces see if that is the mood of the context for example in a context saying that you know they wanted to uh, innovation team they wanted to achieve some great things the team is really committed or the team is struggling uh, to achieve the required uh, velocity so such kind of situations you can adopt this kind of thing so the mood of situation should be you are not able to achieve height because of something is drastically pulling down or something you are able to achieve height but some of the factors are still lowering your velocity this is the thing you actually of uh, put this particular method so the whole context here is the mood of the situation is important the picture is just symbolizing the mood of the context so this method is relevant to the mood of the context so depending upon the mood of the context we have to do this the third one is timeline driven by feelings that means friends the team is very good everything is good suddenly on the last day you see things got worse especially day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 but suddenly things got fallen down you are not able to identify similarly i'll come to a situation wherein the people's motivation has come down one month back everybody said we are as a team right we wanted to work as a team we want to win but one month later people are closed they are not cooperative then you need to understand what's happened which event has triggered them then this method timeline driven by feelings like you know you say okay time starts if your time is one sprint sprint start and sprint end if your timeline is a one month month start and month end right for that period you will ask people okay day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 day 6 day 7 day 8 9 day 9 day 10 and what has made you feel good you put on the top what made you feel lowered you put down and you put the color right like green is on people uh in the yellow blue is on process and amber on bugs right and then violet on tools or technology like this the whole essentially along with the timeline you want them to put their feelings okay if they're good they put top if they're bad they put in the down then it actually reflect you are basically facilitating the team to reflect the mood along with the time sequence so that you can actually use this diagram use this visualization to help them you know figure out where exactly the problem has come in the absence of this kind of format what happens is team tend to think i think on the wrong conclusions they they, they probably may take wrong conclusions because of which the problem has come but ideally the problem could have been a but the problem people are thinking the problem is because of b see it's important my friends in the industry in the personal life in the professional life life we are working upon figuring out the right root cause is very important so when you span the issues especially in a context wherein one month back or two sprints back or one sprint back everything is fine the chemistry is fine suddenly in the last two days you see uh, a situation problems turning out into red so in that scenario this kind of Uh, you know the presentation will help people to derive their feelings out well the fourth one is especially friends i'm telling you the four else what did you like and that means the things you really liked what did you learn in the process 
what actually you longed for and you aspired for this, but you lacked on it. So liked, learned, lacked, and longed for. So liked are the things that I liked in the last print. Learned is something, okay, these are the things I learned, right? These are the things I learned from so-and-so person or so-and-so events. Like lacked means I, I personally believe that, you know, because I did not know, uh, you know, this technical uh, uh, skill uh, because of this, I, I could not complete on time. Longed, this is what actually I longed uh, or I aspired mm -hmm, uh, in the beginning of the sprint, but I could not do that. So, so when you put liked, learned, lacked, and longed, this is kind of format you have to put in mature teams, in a teams where uh, uh, research kind of work is happening, in a situations where people are exploring, right? And uh, especially when people learn new technology frameworks, domain frameworks, when you put this kind of format and conduct your retrospectives, then you actually be more relevant. See friends, each format, every format is giving you the same thing. What did not go well, what went well, and what can be improved. But the point is relevance to their mood, relevance to the context. You have to put the format that is relevant to the context so that you can actually capture their feelings well. If you go to the retrospective with the same format for every retrospective, then you know you may not able to capture their mood, right? So in the research kind of work, innovation kind of a work, or in a mature team, this kind of format will work. The fifth one is the speeding car. Like you're in a situation wherein you know, some people are really working hard. They're really working hard, but you know, their, their effort is not really, uh, uh, you know, understood. I can tell you a scenario saying that some of the team members, they try a lot, they try a lot. And because of certain impediments, their work items are not brought to closure. Hence, there's, uh, you know, ending up on, you know, spilling the stories in a sprint. So they're working hard. The way you accelerate your car, they're, they're doing all their best, but something is pulling them down. If that is the uh, situation you are in, right? You can say here it is called horizontal motion, right? It's horizontally, they want to increase the throughput. They want to increase their velocity. They want to make sure that they want to achieve the set goals. Earlier in the hot balloon method, innovation, height. Here it is, you know, it is on the horizontal way you wanted to speed up. It, it, it depends upon the mood, okay? Then you can put up a car like this and say, guys, whatever is increasing the speed, whatever is increasing to push forward, put those sticks on the engine side because engine is something that gives power. And on the parachute side, because the more speed you go, the more air will come and the parachute will open and it applies brakes for the car. So whatever is stopping you, slowing down like brakes, put down here. So this mode actually represents, right? This context represents the team is really, really putting their leg on the uh, accelerator, but a lot of brakes are being applied. In that mode, you can put this kind of technique and you can ask the people to put the sticky notes on the engine. What is increasing, uh, you know, the speed and uh, acceleration? And you can put um, you can ask people to put some red color sticky notes on the parachute side. What is actually pulling down? What is actually applying brakes on the car? So that people actually can figure out what's happening. The sixth one is happiness radar. See, in most of the scenarios, we are actually, uh, we conduct uh, retrospectives just on the progress side, right? But here, I'm telling you, you also need to talk about people, technology, and process. So certain times people may not want to open it up because it's emotional feelings. They don't want to open in front of people. Then you can say, guys, just provide a happy face, neutral face and sad face. How are you? Right? So people will stick away. Okay, what is your mood at this point in time? I'm happy. I'm neutral. I'm amber. So that itself is provide, it provides signals for you. Right? Similarly, people side, how do you think the technology that we are using, the tools that we are using, the process that we are using is helping? Just give a quick rating, like happy face, neutral face, amber face. Then some people will provide their, uh, you know, all people, we ask them to provide their faces. And then we will ask them, do you want to provide certain insights? Some people may open it up. Some people may not open it up. Whoever gets open, we discuss. Whoever does not open, we take those inputs for offline coaching. We can go one-on-one -on -one and we can ask them to open up and we have to unfold. Friends, I'm telling you, we are working with people. 
people emotions are very important tools today technology is acting really crazy especially in this kind of situation where virtually we are working the technology makes makes a lot of sense it's actually uh, becoming the game changer for us right for example if you have a, a low speed internet what happens is your effectiveness how others perceive about you you know will be less you have to invest and write a right internet right the processes we follow certain processes are heavy processes just to uh, uh, ensure to adherence to processes we spend a lot of time ideally we want the processes to be lightweight so that they will be a help to us instead in some scenarios we end up becoming slave for the processes so we can ask people the happiness index with respect to people technology and processes the seventh is lessons learned for example let us assume that you conduct a 15 sprints and 15 sprints retrospectives are over and over and then the team is successful in some areas failure in some of the areas so you will ask people guys in the last 15 sprints we are successful and we are failed on some items we are successful on some items out of the successful items how many items were planned so planned and successful but we planned but failed this is the second quadrant here and then even though we have not planned unintentionally we could make it successful what are those things and what are the attributes for that and there was unplanned and that was led to failure so the moment you show this kind of a format it tells people to reflect upon okay these attributes are making us succeed okay they are in planned plan we planned it we we were successful but even though we have not planned we were successful because some people were brilliant they they could able to come as situational actions uh, and they they stood up to the situations because of those brilliant people and these things uh, worked rightly and we came to failure because even though we planned certain things did not work out and even though these things got failed because we have not planned and we failed so what happens is when you conduct after let's say 10 red sprints of time when you look at uh, uh, in, in the past and ask the team you if you your intention is identify what worked well for the team then you may follow this kind of a template it all depends upon the context the sprint context the team context the organizational context we are in depending upon the context we have to uh, you know use the right format okay so the next one is the story of a story see uh, i was asking i was talking to one of these scrum masters and uh, i asked what did you do in the last retrospective then the scrum master told uh, look krishna murthy uh, there is one story which is actually spanning for three sprints we are clueless on why it is spanning for three sprints it spilled sprint 1 sprint 2 and it's now in sprint 3 we're really puzzled with this that kind of a scenario you can adopt this what you can do you can basically come up take a story that spilled over take a story that that worked well take a story that created a lot of problems for you first first one only one story and ask the people to along with the timeline way like you know it started let's say one month back now what are the critical event that happened good have events in one color bad events in another color impediments in another color right so so what worked best put it in green color what uh, applied breaks for that applied in red color what were the external dependencies put amber color and see okay it took around one month and this is journey we came back so your entire retrospective is just on the story this is called specifics because certain stories okay if you focus upon that uh, that specific focus those specific insights it will help you so you 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 are in a situation where in team is doing everything great but few stories are really killing us or our few stories you are able to do wonders so those stories pick it up and just analyze the journey of the story along with the timeline then those specifics will help you identify relevant action items on the ground okay friends and then finally the ninth uh, technique is the facilitation of retrospectives itself what helped right what are the things that helped that means help the retrospectives that means you know the scrum master is very good the scrum master is people friendly and the engagement within the team is good and because of this safe environment is coming and people are able to freely talk 
what hindered like that means what are the things that slowed down okay and what are the things that uh, that uh, you know that stopped that applied brakes then there can be uh, the managers are attending the meeting and people are not able to talk freely or there are certain people who are dominating and uh, because of that other people are not able to talk or uh, certain people keep on taking talking on a, on few topics for long 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 so so we wanted to see what are those things and then finally hypothesis right so people will say see you know uh, i think you know if you uh, uh, do not allow those managers team can speak well this is this is a hypothesis this is a statement okay uh, this is the just these are things that team is coming up with certain suggestions to improve it or some people say uh, i feel people should not enter the room should not and they should not bring laptops to the room uh, okay and people should be focused and people should listen and uh, at the time of idea generation people should not come to solutioning so these are the statements so to improve the facilitation of retrospective process what has helped what have hindered what are the hypothesis statement that can improve the retrospective process itself so friends so far we discussed about nine techniques okay the technique one what we all usually do what went well what can be improved what did not go well the second one is hot air balloon method where the the height you are not able to achieve the innovation you are not able to achieve something is pulling up pulling you up more forces are pulling you down to reflect the mood you use this te technique the third one is you now suddenly you see everything was good but suddenly you see things started going wrong so you wanted to see in a timeline way uh, um, you know what was good what did not good uh, what did not go good in a timeline point of view so that you can figure out on which day on you know these things started falling down and you can figure out the proper root cause properly similarly in a cricket matches right if it's 2020 match like you know you put over 1 and over 20 then you know beginning we are very good command to to do score well and to runs to score more runs probably in a ninth over a, a critical player got out because of a silly decision to take a single run he, he was run out there and that has impacted this in the 12th over and 13th over suddenly three wickets fallen down and team morale has come down so what seemed to be a reasonable score and team could win uh, um, the match the ninth over 12th over made the difference and this became possible because of certain wrong decisions and those wrong decisions we should not take that's that kind of a you know timeline perspective you can actually get it and then uh, in a research point of view in an innovation point of view in a technology expeditions point of view you can bring their mood liked learned lacked and long and the speed car for example the team is doing everything that is at their uh, capacity to to do best but somehow they are not able to be how they can achieve that how they can resolve the situation if that is a mode of the context use the speed car method and then happiness basically you wanted to quickly catch up you know whether people are happy technology wise people wise process wise and then you want to generate insights based on the emotions you you for you the people uh, um, uh, if their mood is the topmost priority now then use this the seventh one is you know you have run several sprints and uh, you achieved something you did not achieve then you wanted to reflect upon what are the lessons learned how effectively we are acting on the actions what has what attributes have given us uh, uh, the results out of them how many are planned how many are, are unplanned and and what are the lessons for the upcoming sprints okay this is basically when certain stories are taking more time they're spilling over mm -mm, or certain stories you really cracked it early in the game so most uh, extreme stories either positive or negative uh, uh, difficult stories those stories you wanted to explain you wanted to explore their timeline and make sure that you go to specifics the ninth one is the technique of improving the retrospective facilitation right friends these are the nine techniques now let us now discuss the nine anti patterns that can derail our retrospectives the first one the scenario is poor participation there is a scrum master of a eight member team he is trying his best to make the team speak during retrospectives the scrum master is kept on asking the team members to speak guys speak 
speak, contribute. Unless you speak, unless you contribute, retrospectives won't be effective. And it's so happening that only two people are talking and other people are busy at their laptops with their laptops. Then the scum master says, guys, you also need to speak. Oh, yeah, I agree with that person. I agree with this person. I am also speaking, but I agree with that person. So these people are doing laptops and whenever scum master comes and disturbs their comfort zone, they look up and say, uh, I agree with that person. I'm speaking. So likewise, they, they, they do. So there is no participation. And how can we resolve that kind of situation in a retrospective? Okay, friends, the first one is we should make sure the working agreements are revised with a statement, let laptops not to be used during retrospectives. So once we update the working agreements, Scrum Master gets the power. My friends, as part of the working agreements, we are telling laptops should not be used, number one. Number two, it's eight member team. You divide them into four groups. That means each group is having two member, two member, two member. So focus is more, okay? And then ask the two member group to come back with, you know, what went well, what can continue on what did not go well. And you can adopt any other format as well. And then once they generate insights, then divide the groups into two groups. Earlier we made four groups, each member, each group, two members, two, 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 two. Each two member team, you are mandating them to generate the sticky notes and providing you in terms of what went well, what can contribute, what did not go well. And uh, then the second one is, uh, the second one is you are basically uh, converting them. You are actually asking them uh, to regroup into two, two groups, wherein uh, in, in four member team is th there. And then you are basically asking them to present their analysis. So uh, to, as a two member team, they generate insights, they generate the data. As a four member team, they talk to each other and they present their output and ultimately you prioritize action items. So this is one of the solution you can adopt in the case some members are not participating and you can basically disturb their comfort zone uh, through this process. The second one is low energy levels. The scrum team convenes uh, for the retrospective meetings and they discusses what went well, what did not go well, what can continue. So uh, the scrum, scrum master is doing everything possible and everything is going good, but the team is speculating and uh, they just talk about their opinions, their beliefs, and they don't verify with the data at all. They just come and talk and they think what they think as a possible solution, they're doing it. And uh, so because of this, what is happening is uh, somehow things are not connecting. So because things are not relevant, uh, and what people are talking is not making sense. Most of the people, uh, they're not, uh, they're not opening up. And uh, even if they open up, people are confronting them with the highest possible energy. So over the period of time, they stop talking and the energy levels also going down. So what to do in this kind of scenarios? The solution is make sure that you gather numbers, like, like you know, features, stories completed, additional tasks completed, burn down charts, burn up charts, velocity, defect counts, make sure that, you know, people talk based on hard data, right? And then facilitate in such a way that, you know, whatever you are talking out of beliefs, uh, that is not matching with the data. So how do you ensure that you are right? So likewise, make the team to step back and, and think about these numbers so that, you know, the mm, talking based upon opinion won't come there, okay? The next one, the team is not contributing. Uh, that means, uh, so basically most of the action items that the team has identified, uh, they're not getting closed. It's almost the action items are in open state for last six sprints. So when, when the team is not actually contributing, what to do right? in that kind of scenario? So basically you have to uh, make sure that, you know, action items are prioritized, right? So even though team generates uh, 12 items, 15 action items at the end of the sprint, say only two action items I can pick it up given our uh, uh, focus, priority, uh, you know, schedule and the resource uh, bandwidth available and other constraints. Agree with those priority action items and put an action item owner for each of the action items. If there is an action item that is external, like it is, it's depending on somebody else, uh, assign a specific person and mark them as team friend and make sure that person also comes to your stand-up meeting just to update the action item progress. So you take those priority action items as part of stand-up as well. So, so as part of daily stand-up meeting, you discuss about, you know, uh, uh, you know, 
what i did what did i do yesterday what i'm planning to do today what are my dependencies along with that after that you know you you allocate certain time to go through the action items that were discussed as part of retrospective so unless people get a feeling saying that you know whatever i spoke and they have been acted upon they want to contribute so when action items are not being acted for for last six sprints then there is no people will get a feeling that what, what is the use if i open up they just uh, write it there and they won't act on it then what to do so it's all about you know setting up the action items and come on prioritizing them putting action items owners for that and if they are depending on other people set uh, a, a, a people a person name to that action item ask them to that person to join your team as a team friend and certain times i also participated in a process called organization impediment board so at the organization level between 12 to 1230 anybody can paste uh, an impediment on the organization board anybody on the floor any time they can put action items there because they feel that at the team level it's not getting sorted out so that board is visible to everybody you go and you discuss about it and in the 12 to 1230 in the afternoon uh, among with the senior people you look at it and you resolve it and thereby there's a fastness and focus with respect to action items and also the people who uh, generated good ideas will be appreciated as part of that okay the next one is domination and quality problems right in certain scenarios uh, you experience you know a quality problems are coming on the on the sprint outcome that is potentially shippable increment and also people are jumping into solutions uh, uh, the moment somebody talks about a problem immediately other person talks the solution they are not listening and uh, certain senior members are um, dominating what to do in that situation you have to set the stage you have to say guys during idea generation phase right we should encourage ideas see when people are talking let the problems um, flow in right solution we'll do later let the problem flowing in let's set that it's a working agreement and then we have to use certain technique like fishbone diagram to generate insights like environment wise people wise equipment wise management material process wise what are the problems okay you can also put the structure them as people process inputs scope progress external dependencies likewise also so so that you know you also can track the cycle time that uh, you know that each ticket is taking each story is taking why the definition of time is not met uh, test coverage review efficacy such kind of things you can put it and then you decide upon what to do so basically through setting up uh, the working agreements you are asking senior members not to be jump on solutions when we are saying everybody's voice is important and we should make sure that you know in a time box where everybody takes up the mic and they talk about it and then you capture those things and while people are talking the scrum master records and uh, other people are not supposed to jump on to solutions and then you basically put them in, in terms of uh, uh, to the data you hook them to the data saying that these are the statistics these are the numbers with respect to cycle time uh, these stories have not met the definition of ten this is the test average this is the review efficiency and then you ask people to work upon it the next part, method is you know every time the scrum master comes he brings up the same method that is what went well what can be improved what did not go well it's a same boring method so team is in a different context at a different point in time and suiting the different uh, the context we have to bring in the nine retrospective format where we can use one of the retrospective formats the next one is productivity is not increasing beyond a point that means your velocity is not increasing uh, beyond a point what to do right so uh, you can revisit the metrics like cycle time why definition of done is not met test coverage review efficacy and also you can focus upon areas like cross function scaling implementation of tools automation possibilities you can leverage the reuse elimination of waste and extreme programming practices so if you follow these kind of a thing then definitely velocity can increase so believe me friends through uh, adopting a process proper process you are actually bringing discipline discipline will make x to 2x or at the maximum 3x but it can't uh, help beyond that point if you want if you want to make a 3x 
to 10x, right? The technology innovation is important. Right, or something, you know, a, a proper culture change should be is needed, or some some kind of environmental situation need to be changed. So those things we need to discuss about it, and we need to focus on those areas. And then major stories are spilling over to further sprints. The reason can be uh, the team is taking stories which are not compliant to uh, definition of ready. The, so stakeholders are telling, okay, third day we'll make uh, this constraint uh, result take up this story as part of the sprint. This story, fifth day, we will ensure third party dependencies result. You can plan from that day, take up this. So fifth day comes, it won't get solved. Third day comes, it won't get solved. Ultimately, in front of stakeholders, you appear as if you are taking major number of stories and you end up as spilling over and your motivation level is coming down. So in those situations, you have to ensure that you, know, you are uh, strictly implementing definition of ready. You have to agree what is definition of ready. You have to ensure that who, whatever story is not compliant with definition of ready, you should not accept it. So you apply back pressure on product owner so that you won't take half cooked stories. Then the next question is team is not motivated. Okay, so you have to check for signals saying that, you know, uh, are the retrospectives, are the conversations during the sprint are happening on the individual focus rather than team-based because Agile believes in team spirit. As a team, we win. As a team, we lose, right? So, so instead of focusing on team-specific approach, are we adopting uh, the approach uh, with respect to uh, you know, individual performance? You are not doing well. You did not do this well. You could have done this better. This you, you, you. Uh, <laughs> it, it basically makes people to take back seat. At the end of the day, friends, uh, out of... Uh, 100 points, uh, 80 scenarios or 80 points, people won't do because they're not properly equipped. In 20 scenarios or 20 person scenarios only because of uh, uh, people specific issues, they won't work. So when you, we are not getting proper outcome, don't jump on people performance as the first option. If people finding out mistakes, the people should be the last option. You have to figure out you know, uh, inputs wise, process wise, uh, uh, methods wise, inputs wise, the way we are uh, trying to adopt um, uh, to, to solve a problem uh, that methodology wise, are we right? Are people are properly equipped? Um, why that person is doing this? Why this person is doing like this? That's kind of a thing. And uh, so that, you know, you basically uh, be a, uh, you know, you be a mature, you, you, you take a team's hat rather than individual hat. You take individual hat in the offline only in, you know, only off as a loss result. And then find the second option can be uh, nobody is listening to nobody. They just, they just focus on what they want to convey. In most of the time, friends, I'm telling you, uh, uh, even though we are telling that, you know, we are listening, we listen, all those things, what happens is even in the process of listening, we tend to prepare what we need to tell, right? Uh, but we don't listen. So listening is all about, you have to keep yourself in that person's shoes. You have to be empathetic about that context and you have to listen to him. Listening does not mean you have to agree. Listening means you understand the context from his perspective or her perspective. So when we don't listen, then, you know, then also people won't get motivated. So we need to generate one-on-one -on -one discussions with the team to, to learn what makes the team feel like that. So is it... Uh, the conversations, is it uh, 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 the, the way people are behaving to each other? Is it salary related uh, discussions? Is it uh, designation related discussions? We have to do more of offline coaching and we need to figure out and we need to generate insights and we have to act on top of that. And finally, team, team is not opening up despite best efforts. Whatever we have done, team is not uh, opening up. Probably because uh, you know, the managers are attending or they are not finding a, a safe environment there. So they are very close. Our team is committed. You see, nowadays, uh, people are uh, uh, also becoming smart, right? Uh, we want good managers. And uh, when good managers are not there, we, we crib uh, saying that, you know, uh, I mean, working in an environment wherein good managers are not there. But when good managers are there, you won't work. Because at the end of the day, there's an ego, right? Uh, I don't accept my mistake. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah? Always I point mistake with others. And uh, I don't want to agree any mistake. The moment you put a mistake saying that, okay, 
uh, Rama, you are not doing this. The moment you get into defensive mode and you tend to put action certain friends, I'm telling you, we're working in people environment. It's okay. People don't feel comfortable with me. It's okay. I want to know. I want to ask the data points. Later, I'll process. But at that point, when people start talking, don't attack. Okay, why did you not do that? Okay, I did not do. Why you did not do that? All right, don't get into that. Right? So friends, at the end of the day, you can bring change. First person who is in your control is yourself. I can bring change within me. Right? That's the first thing. I have control on myself. What is in our control? Let's do that. Yeah. Then you start changing the context. The moment you put become aggressive and put your fingers, okay, you will move to other context, but there also people will be there. It's just that you are you are delaying the problem, right? So I'm telling is there's a problem on both the sides. The environment is not proper. The people can be working in an authoritative mode. And individually, I'm also not positioning my argument properly. I'm not probably identifying the right opportunity. Probably I'm not using the right timing to right, to our right method mm -mm, uh, so uh, we are so we have to think about those things right so these are the things friends so at the end friends i'm telling you reflection and uh, adoption as an individual as a team we have to do believe me my friends we are in a private industry right our jobs are not secure okay our knowledge our network our trustworthiness is our tomorrow right if families are you know uh, uh, in depending on our salary we can protect our salary we can increase our market share we can increase our market opportunity by reflection a birthday comes reflect friends reflect in the last year what, what i wished i would have been by now what went wrong you you there's a brilliant person inside you spend time with yourself learn what went well, what did not go well, what could have been improved. The moment you hook to your inner self, your inner self will give you the ideas. The moment you adapt to that, you will actually see a brilliant person in yourself. Because what will happen is we spend up 50 years, 60 years and great people, they fall in down because of simple mistakes. That is the reason. We have to reflect, adopt as a team, as an individual. If you do a morning walk, reflect. What did you do yesterday? What did you not do well yesterday? How you could have done something different? If you are doing a weekly walk, time spend yourself. If you're taking a coffee, spend time with yourself. While taking a hot coffee, hot tea, spend time with yourself. As a team, be open, friends. Be open. You be a catalyst for a positive change. Pause and reflect. This most is most important. Friends, we are in the age of speed. But believe me, my friends, it is slowness that gives you more speed. Right? If you keep on one, if you keep on solving more, 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 more problems, some mistake will, will kill you like anything. Instead, you go in a medium speed. Okay, reflect, adopt, learn, reflect adopt, learn, implement. And this is the way as a cycle we should do that. That is where we can achieve greatest height as a team and as an individual. So friends, thanks for your interest. And in this session, we have learned the five steps to perform retrospectives and nine different retrospective formats, how to facilitate depending upon the mood and context of the situation and the nine anti-pattern that can derail your retrospectives. I thank your interest and I look forward to add more value add sessions. With this, I can take questions.